Hi, my name is Ryan and welcome to Suter Bowling. Today I'm going to talk to you about some factors that go into choosing a bowling ball arsenal. You know, bowling is a precision sport and selecting the right arsenal of bowling balls is crucial to matching up on the lanes and improving your game. So let's talk about a few things that go into choosing a good arsenal for you. Understanding your bowling style is crucial to choosing the right equipment. Whether you're a stroker, tweener, cranker, two-hander, or anything in between, your style will influence your ball selection. If you like to play up the boards with a controlled release and a modest amount of revs, odds are you're likely a stroker. If you're a power player who likes to move inside and hook the entire lane like myself, you're likely a cranker. Determining and knowing what kind of bowler you are goes a long way in figuring out how to build the proper arsenal to suit your needs. Beyond understanding your own game, you will also need to understand ball motion. There are three phases the ball experiences as it travels down the lane. Those three phases are skid, hook, and roll. The skid phase is how far down the lane the ball slides before gaining traction. The hook phase is where the ball gains traction with the lane and changes direction. The roll phase is where the ball has essentially completed its change of direction and enters through the pins. With all of the modern technology that goes into a bowling ball today, we can essentially control how far down the lane the ball exits the skid phase and transitions into the hook and roll phases. Having a variety of core types and cover stocks can help you be prepared for whatever lane conditions you may encounter. We will talk more about cores and cover stocks in just a moment. Now that we understand a little bit more about how ball motion works, let's talk about lane conditions. What a lot of new bowlers don't realize when it comes to the sport is that there's actually a large amount of variability when it comes to the lanes themselves. For example, there are two primary types of lane surfaces, wood and synthetic. Those can be broken down into further categories as well, given that there are two main manufacturers of synthetic lanes, AMF and Brunswick, and wood lanes vary based on how old they are, and some wood lanes have what is called a guardian barrier on top of them for the first 15 feet or so, which can affect lane play as well. Regardless of the type of lane you are bowling on, there is always a layer of con lane conditioner, or what we bowlers call oil, this oil is spread out across the lane in what is called an oil pattern. This can be used to change the difficulty of the patterns and how far down the ball begins to enter the hook phase. Knowing what kind of lane conditions you're likely to encounter based off of the type of lane surface and distribu distribution of oil will play a vital role in choosing a proper arsenal. So. Now that we know that, let's talk a little bit about what's actually inside of a bowling ball. In a sport where one of the biggest variables that affects the difficulty of the game is invisible, it would only seem right that one of the most important parts of the equipment can't be seen either, at least from the outside. Yes, I am talking about bowling ball cores. Inside of a bowling ball, especially higher performance bowling balls, is a core that affects ball motion. There are two primary types of cores in high-performance bowling balls. We call them symmetrical and asymmetrical. The manipulation of these cores by bowling ball manufacturers can play a big role in the intended motion of a bowling ball, and there is a wide ver variability when it comes to different types of asymmetry in asymmetrical bowling balls. It is a highly technical field of mechanical engineering, and we won't get into more specific details such as RG and differential in this video. For now, the most important thing to know is that symmetrical cores generally provide a smooth, consistent, and controllable shape, while asymmetrical cores generally provide higher hook potential with higher instability. In general, if you are looking for a bowling ball motion to be easily controllable, you will want to add a symmetrical ball to your arsenal. If you're looking for something that can get into an earlier hook phase to cut through heavy oil, you'll likely prefer an asymmetrical ball. The most important thing is to make sure that you work with your local pro shop operator to figure out what types of cores match your style 
and the lane conditions you're bowling on. Now that we've talked a little bit about what's inside of a bowling ball, let's talk about what's on the outside, cover stocks. As I mentioned previously, bowling ball cores play a pretty significant role in the motion of a bowling ball down the lane. However, the single most important factor that determines a bowling ball's motion is what's on the outside of the bowling ball that actually touches the lane, the cover stock. There are three main types of cover stocks used today, polyester, urethane, and reactive resin. Polyester cover bowling balls, also known as plastic balls, are generally meant to go straight. They are made of a very hard material that doesn't absorb oil, causing it to cut straight through the oil and prevent it from slowing down due to friction on the lane surface beyond the oil pattern. This means that generally, they don't hook very much at all. In most situations, a polyester ball is used to shoot its spares, in particular, the 10-pin for right-handers and 7-pin for left-handers. It is an essential tool that I recommend everyone have in their bag if they want to improve their game. Urethane balls hook more than polyester balls as they generally have a little bit sur softer surface material. This allows them to have better traction with the lane surface. Like a polyester ball, a true urethane cover bowling ball will not absorb oil. The main ball motion characteristic of urethane is that it hooks very early on the lane, creating a smooth and controllable reaction with very little down lane motion. This is why many professionals prefer to use them on conditions where there's a lot of friction down lane combined with a difficult, higher volume oil pattern. A urethane ball is used by many bowlers as a spare ball option as well due to their generally lower hook potential. This allows these bowlers to have a bowling ball that does double duty as both a spare ball and a strike ball when the conditions call for it. The final main type of cover stock is reactive resin. Reactive resin balls hook the most amount of boards among the three main cover stock types. These cover stocks absorb oil and come in a variety of colors, finishes, and have different additives. These additives play a big role in the overall hook and motion of a bowling ball. Reactive bowling balls can be broken down into three category types, solid, hybrid, and pearl. Once again, I won't go into detail about the chemical engineering that goes into each of these types of reactive resin, but it's important to understand the general motion and purpose of each kind of reactive resin bowling ball. Solid cover stocks are generally higher traction covers. They are going to dig through the oil deeper than either hybrid or pearl cover stocks, meaning that they enter the hook phase earlier than the other two types of reactive resin. A good example of a reactive ball with a solid cover is the Rotogrip Gem. Pearl cover stocks are generally designed to travel further down the lane before entering the hook phase, making them ideal in conditions where other bowling balls are hooking earlier than they should. This is particularly useful in later games of competition where the oil is closest to the foul line, has been removed or displaced. A good example of a pearl bowling ball would be the Katana Assault. The third type of reactive resin cover stock is the hybrid cover stock. Known for being highly versatile, they are a mix of solid and reactive additives and pearl reactive additives. This gives them a very nice balance allowing the ball to get through the front part of the lane easily without going too far down the lane before entering the hook phase. Hybrid cover stocks often vary in the ratio of solid to pearl additives, so it's a good idea to thoroughly research a hybrid ball before you decide to add it to your arsenal. A good example of a hybrid cover stock bowling ball would be the Conspiracy Hybrid. Now that we've gone over what some of the most important factors that goes into choosing a bowling ball arsenal are, being cover stock, core, lane conditions, and what type of bowler you are, let's put some of what we've just learned into practice a little bit. Let's make a six ball arsenal. So now that we have learned how the metaphorical hot dogs are made, let's make them ourselves. For this example, we aren't going to use specific bowling balls that are on the market today, given that there are new releases on a near monthly basis. 
Instead, we are going to create a generic six ball tournament arsenal with a combination of cores and cover stocks to best prepare ourselves for a variety of lane conditions that we may encounter. As a little bit of a disclaimer, I am going to put these in order of most necessary to have in your arsenal to least necessary. That way, if you wanted to go with a two, three, or four ball arsenal instead, you can just take the first few recommendations here instead. The first ball we are going to choose, without hesitation, is a polyester spare ball. Just as a golfer wouldn't golf without a putter, a bowler shouldn't bowl without a spare ball. This will very likely be the most used bowling ball in your arsenal, especially if you're bowling on more difficult patterns. The second ball we are going to choose is going to be what's called the benchmark ball. A stereotypical benchmark ball is going to be a symmetrical solid ball. This is going to be the first ball out of your bag at competition, the ball you're most comfortable getting lined up with, and the ball that you're going to make your future decisions off of. The controllable and predictable motion of the symmetrical solid allows you to get a baseline for what the conditions are giving you on that particular day. The third ball we are going to choose is going to be an asymmetrical pearl ball. This ball will be useful in conditions where your benchmark ball is either burning up and leaving flat corner bins, or hooking too much. One of the guidelines I go by when deciding to switch from my benchmark ball to an asymmetrical bowling ball is if you leave a 4-pin for right-handers, make an adjustment, then leave a flat 10-pin, it's time to switch to something that has a shinier cover stock, the pearl, to get further down the lane, but allows you to move inside with that stronger asymmetric core. The fourth ball we're going to look at is going to be a symmetrical hybrid. This ball will be useful if your benchmark ball is burning up too early, but your asymmetrical pearl is making too violent of a motion when it hooks, causing you to leave difficult spares. The goal of this ball is to allow you to sit in the same area as your benchmark ball by the hybrid co cover stock allowing it to stay in the skid phase a little bit longer while also getting a proper ball reaction. The fifth ball we're going to add is going to be an asymmetrical solid. This is going to be your hook monster ball for when you need the ball to dig through the oil and start hooking as soon and as much as possible. This ball is going to give you a very early ball motion and will be useful on higher volumes and shorter patterns to help control the back end reaction. This particular slot in the bag is also where we start to get some versatility options as well. If you want a similar but not the same ball motion, but don't want to cover nearly as many boards as an asymmetrical solid from right to left, you could opt for a urethane ball in this spot as well. The sixth ball we are going to add is going to be one that fills out what you feel you need in your bag. If you're using a six ball arsenal, the odds are that you're a little bit more of an advanced bowler with a general understanding of some of the concepts we've covered, but might be looking for some ideas how to fill in these gaps. For example, if you feel as though you need something that gets through the front of the lane very easily for high friction conditions while still maintaining some controllability, you can opt for a symmetrical pearl ball. If you want to make sure that you have both an asymmetrical solid and a urethane shape in your bag, you can use this final slot for that as well. I know I've mentioned this already before in this video, but the most important thing you can do is consult with your local pro shop operator to figure out what's going to best fit your game. This is what they do for a living, and they know your game better than random strangers over the internet like myself. Choosing your arsenal is a strategic process that can make or break your chances at success on the lanes. Doing the job with the wrong tools isn't going to get you the results that you want. You need to understand your style, the lane conditions, and the features of the different bowling balls that are available for you to build your arsenal. You need to make sure that you consult with your local pro shop operator so that you can work together to figure out what the right path is for you and your game. If you understand the concepts that we went over in this video, do the necessary research on the equipment that's on the market right now, and work with someone who builds arsenals for a living, you're going to increase your chances of success and be on the way to becoming a better bowler. Do you have any questions that you would like answered or any suggestions for any future videos? Please make sure to leave a comment. Also, if you found this video helpful in the slightest, 
please make sure you like, subscribe, and share it with your other bowling friends. In addition, make sure you hit the notification bell so that you can be notified whenever I post a video tracking my knee surgery recovery progress and other bowling content. Thanks again for watching Suter Bowling and keep on striking.